And if we understand that the one who created the universe, he hates, he abhors sin. And he will always judge sin because he cannot live with sin. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. And small minds discuss people. And my name is Kwesi Ado Sampo. Welcome to Life and Religion Issues. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hit that subscribe button. Sanctification is when the Holy Spirit is working on you and he's weaning you gradually away from sin. He is sanctifying you. He uses the washing of the water to sanctify you. That is why the more you stay in the Word, the more you read the Word, the more you see that you are progressing in your Christian walk. When you stay away from studying the word, reading the word, memorizing the word, you see that sin is very close to you. So he uses the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, uses the, 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 the washing of the water to sanctify us. So we are saved. We are being saved. That is uh, uh, sanctification. And the ultimate is that we shall be saved when we are taken away from sin. So when is sanctification complete? Nobody knows. I don't know when sanctification is complete. But I know that when he appears, I'll be like him. When I am completely transformed into his nature, then that is the final step of salvation. So we are saved, we are being saved, and we shall be saved. Now, when it comes to judgment, he will judge Christians, but the judgment of Christians is with a view to giving us crowns concerning the work we did here. And so our judgment as Christians is different from the judgment of those whose names are not found in the Lamb's book of life. I hope I've made it clear. Thank you. Is there any other question? Yes, come forward and ask your question. Thank you for doing um, If I get you correctly, um, so you are saying that as Christians, as righteous people, the Bible says that we, uh, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So it means that we, like you said, God has judged sin on himself. It means that we, we have become new and blameless because the sin God has committed upon himself. So, I wanted to read John 16, 8, uh, where the, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit convicting the sinner sin. And when you continue, uh, you get the, the 9 and 11, it's talking about the Holy Spirit, how he deals with the righteous. It says, convicts us of righteousness, not sin. So why then is it necessary for us to be praying for forgiveness when the Holy Spirit does not uh, convict the righteous of sin? Because we've accepted Christ, we are righteous people, we are His people. So why then the Holy Spirit has to preach us again and convict us of sin? Okay, the, the, okay, thank you very much. The righteousness of God is imparted to you when you accept Jesus Christ. But that righteousness is a potential righteousness. That righteousness must be manifest righteousness or experiential righteousness. And like I said, um, after you have accepted him, you are learning to walk. You trip once a while. You fall down. You get up. 
you confess. That's how, why the Holy Spirit will convict you to confess your sin. If you do not confess your sin, then John the Beloved says, maybe you were amongst us, but you were not one of us. That is why you are living in the sin. But if you're a child of God, the Spirit of God will convict you, and you have to repent, and you have to ask for uh, 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 forgiveness. It's like when you are getting out of the house, normally from us, from this side of the world, even though we have a lot of dust, but we always make sure we wash the car and make it clean. Always. But when it's raining, sometimes you get the rain mixed with some of the dust in the air on the windshield, and then you use your windshield. You've already washed, but you use your windshield to clean the spots of dust that mix with the rain and become like a muddy puddle. You can't even see from your windshield. So you use a wiper to do that. So that is the way the Christian lives. You've washed, but you always need a wiper so that you can see clearly. Let me read 1 John chapter 1 to you. And he's talking to the children, that is Christians. 1 John 1 from 1 and 2. My little children, these things are right to you that you sin not. But if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. I'm writing that you do not sin, but perchance you sin, we have the advocate, and he is a propitiation of our sins, for our sins. Not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. What is he saying? He's saying that I don't expect you to live in sin, but in case you sin, then you have the propitiation. And what, that's a very big word. Do anybody has a simpler word? Any new version? Yes? Anyone? Any new version? Atonement. Okay. We have someone who pleads with the Father on our behalf. Now let's look at First John chapter 1, verse 8. He's still talking to Christians. That's why he calls them little children. And he says, First John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, he has saved us but we are not preaching sinless perfection. And so we can fall in sin. And it says that we cannot claim that we have no sin, even as children of God. But if we sin, and if we confess our sin, confess sin, sometimes when you say this thing, people think that, then that, if that's the case, then we all sin and then go and confess our sin and continue to sin and confess our sin. Then we have not really understood what he has done for us. Then we are taking his death for granted. Then we are shunning or missing a great fellowship that we could have with him here, even on this earth before we go to heaven. But if we are trying to live the righteous life, 
And in case we fall, we trip and fall, he says that we have an advocate. And 1 John 1 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive our sins and to cleanse. And the word cleanse there, the Greek word is the same word translated as um, is helasmos. Eh? That word is like detergent. The same word translated detergent. So he will not only cleanse us, he will sanctify us if we confess our sin. He doesn't just take the sin away, but he makes us able to overcome that sin. And it is living by faith, knowing that no matter the temptation, you have the power of God, the grace of God to overcome that temptation. I believe you are clear. Is there any other question? Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I'm reading from 1 John 5, verse 16, New King James Version. It says, If anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he, and he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that to pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the, and the wicked one does not touch him. So I have two questions from this scriptures I read. The first one has to do with the sin which does not lead to death. Uh, could you throw a bit more light on that one for us? And the second one has to do with the verse 18, which says that we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. It makes a statement that if you are born of God, you do not sin. Could you throw a bit more light on that one as well? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the first one. Uh, um, we know that there is some sin that is leading to death, a sin unto death, and that one you shouldn't even pray for the person, right? And so you are trying to ask, what is the sin leading to death? It is something that uh, theologians have argued and argued and argued. Uh, one side that I uh, agree with, that some theologians seem to agree on, is that God forgives every sin. The only sin God does not forgive is rejecting his forgiveness. Just like I said earlier on, that he has come to take upon himself the punishment for sin. And so, if he is giving you the gift of forgiveness and reconciliation, and you refuse, then his full wrath is coming upon you. And so if somebody will refuse the forgiveness of God, that is a sin unto death. That is where a lot of theologians agree with. Now, the other one, verse 18, that to the translation in King James and New King James is a little because of the tense that is used. It's perfect tense. And so uh, the other versions like NIV, this is the way NIV translates this. We know that anyone born of God does not continue in sin. One who was born of God keeps them safe and the evil one cannot harm them. So the operative word there is continuing in sin. What does it mean? It means that if you're a child of God 
and you find yourself to have tripped, the Holy Spirit will continue to judge you because every sin breaks fellowship with the Holy Spirit, with God. God, God is holy. So sin breaks fellowship with God, every sin. That is why there is need for repentance and confession and then fellowship is restored. There are two kinds of relationship with God. We have relationship as in father, son, father, daughter. Then we have fellowship. And we can see that if you are a father and uh, your son misbehaves whilst you are away, and the mother says, I will tell daddy because I said this, you, you gave me a hard time, you did this, did it. When the, you come back from trip or from journey, and then the child who will normally come and meet you, when he sees you coming, he's trying to find a place to hide because fellowship is broken because of sin. But the relationship is still there as father-son. And so, continuing in sin is constantly rejecting the admonition of the Holy Spirit, the judgment of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's judgment is not unto death. His judgment is for you to repent so that fellowship will be restored. If you continue in sin, then John is saying, then you are not born of God. So if you are indeed born of God, you will not continue in sin. So he's not talking about slipping into sin and confessing, but continuing in it. I hope that is clear. Is there any other question? If there's no question, we'll bring a meeting to an end. Well, thank you very much for your patience and thank you for coming and uh, make sure that you come next week because we'll have another very interesting topic. I normally like to be the one peppering people with a question, not answering the question, but today my uh, didn't come. So hopefully, hopefully next week we'll have another wonderful time and as I say, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the notification button because every Tuesday midnight, a new video is released. And so if you hit the notification button when it is released, you'll be notified that you go and watch. And make sure you share to your friends. Thank you so very much. God bless you. See you again. Bye-bye. And if we understand that the one who created the universe, he hates, he abhors sin. And he will always judge sin because he cannot live with sin. Welcome to Life and Religion Issues. 